Hello people and welcome to this uh, latest video on Euclidean Sequencer. Uh, this time we're going over everything new in version 1.03. Now this new version includes uh, a, a true polyrhythm mode as well as a polymeter mode, but we'll go over that a bit later. I just want to draw your attention to a few uh, user interface uh, differences. Now, I've done a lot of work on the uh, editing facilities and you can now obviously uh, see that uh, as we change band here the colour coding of the scales on the keyboard overlay now uh, is a lot clearer to read. Uh, if I change scale you'll see uh, what I mean. Now we've also added a number of new scales. Now some of these are intended for drones and not really for chordal backing but we'll come to that a little bit later. Uh, and also uh, in the chord uh, selection now, we've added the uh, sixth and seventh chords there, and that adds a lot of flavor when randomizing uh, sequences. I'll go over that again in a second. Now, when you manually lay in notes in the editor, it's nice to have a guide to know where the last note should be placed. And if you see now, we have a vertical line down the uh, uh, down that uh, editor. Uh, uh, on band D and as I uh, adjust the e events on that band you'll see that vertical line change so that is kind of a guide to show you where the last note needs to be laid now if you lay any notes uh, beyond that vertical uh, guide uh, if I decrease the number of events for instance on band C you'll see all the notes to the right of that get ghosted now uh, in other words they will not take part in that sequence now in the previous version we added a lot of options to the settings menu that allowed us to set defaults for things like randomization and uh, uh, program change ranges and stuff like that. And uh, that was all well and good but you had to configure it for each patch. Well, we now have two options at the bottom of this menu. Uh, we can load defaults and save defaults. Which means if we now make a change to uh, anything in here uh, we can hit the save defaults button and that will become the default setting. Now the great thing about that is whenever we create a new session those defaults are loaded. And I can demonstrate that by uh, taking a little look at the uh, program change settings that I've got currently set up. And uh, you'll notice that there's no program change settings currently there. But I know that my defaults, if I create a new session, my defaults do set up my my preferred choices for uh, program changes. And you can see here, they've now been uh, set. And uh, that's a fantastic way, I think, of uh, initializing new sessions. Now, another addition to this version is two additional speed settings, 1.5 and 3 times. So you can now set these odd um, speeds per band. Uh, these are a little bit experimental and I might add more speeds later, but we're just going to see how these go for now. And probably the biggest enhancement in this version is the ability to switch between polymeter and polyrhythm modes. And that's going to need some explanation because most people won't know what they are. I think polymeter is probably the one you're going to use most often, but I know a lot of you out there wanted a true polyrhythm mode. But before I explain the differences between those two modes, uh, obviously now we've added the, um, the new uh, chords and scales. Uh, I think the actual randomization of uh, patterns has now uh, vastly improved in that uh, if you listen to me just randomizing a few patterns here, just listen to the difference in, uh, in, in sequences we get now, and they're all very, very usable.
Now don't forget you can always uh, compare that with anything you've randomised previously by going back with the, with the undo button. And I think a new addition since the last video is the redo button so we can move backward and forward uh, between all randomization. Now notice in, in those examples the chord and the scale buttons were active. Uh, but if we just want to randomize a chord and, and maintain the scale, we turn uh, the scale off and then every time we randomize, we're just going to get a different chord within that scale. Now, if we uh, turn everything off and randomize, it will stay within that chord and scale. But if we turn on just scale on its own and randomize, you'll notice that instead of getting a chord within the scale, it, we're getting the whole scale. So notes will be randomized across the whole, whole scale, which is great for some of the new uh, scales I've added and for drones. So let's take a look at the difference between uh, polymeter and polyrhythm. Um, by default, everything we've done so far is polymeter, but we can now um, use the polyrhythm mode. And I'm going to demonstrate that by uh, starting a brand new session and then just setting the output to uh, each of the four ports just so that there's a separate instrument there so you can hear what's going on. Now if I set a, a different number of steps on each band and um, start playback in polymeter mode you'll notice that each band uh, plays a note on a beat and each band is moving at a different speed. So essentially band B is taking longer to complete because there's 24 beats, whereas band A only has 16 beats. But if we move into uh, polyrhythm mode and uh, start playback, you'll notice that um, both of these uh, move at the same speed. It, that's regardless of the number of steps that are on that band. Now by setting the global speed to one, uh, it takes 16 beats for this clock to rotate whereas if we uh, set the global speed to 4 then it will do a rotation in 4 beats so and obviously 2 would be uh, somewhere in between so you can choose the global speed depending on your application now of course you can have uh, bands in reverse or ping pong modes and uh, obviously then the uh, the hands will rotate uh, differently but uh, the essential thing is that that band completes its cycle uh, the, or the wheel should I say uh, completes its cycle in the same time so band A, B, C, D all complete in the same time now let's demonstrate this with some randomizations and if you've noticed I've turned note randomization off I've turned everything off essentially and I'm just randomizing patterns Now in this mode they can sound quite chaotic but every now and again you uh, hit on a uh, on something that gives quite a syncopated beat So the algorithm involved in creating uh, the uh, polyrhythms versus polymeters is completely different and it attempts to try and give you uh, something where we get some kind of syncopation going on 
Um, but it, it, again, it is a bit chaotic and uh, you have to try a few times before you get something that's really usable. Now in this uh, in this mode, uh, the randomization always sets the band speed to 1. You can vary this uh, yourself manually, but in general uh, you want them all at the same speed. Uh, it will randomize the global speed if you ch turn on uh, speed randomization. Now it is possible to store say a polyrhythm in pattern 1 and a polymeter in pattern 2 and then switch between them seamlessly. And uh, just like we can with the polymeter, we can also uh, specify controllers. Now you'll notice now that the controller lane also highlights uh, where the actual beats lie within those that grid of events. So uh, that's quite a useful feature. That That is only true in polymeter mode. Um, obviously uh, in polyrhythm mode, notes don't fall on boundaries, so we don't show that. Now finally for those that want more control on the fly we've added four extra parameters uh, events A to D to the exposed AU uh, parameters uh, so we can map those for instance in AUM and control uh, the number of events per band. Um, now that works in polyrhythmic mode and polymeter mode probably more useful in polyrhythm mode uh, and I know that's something that a lot of you had requested. So that's just about it for this short look at 1.03 update. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel don't forget to do so and if you like what you see in these videos don't forget to thumb up the video. So uh, goodbye for now and I'll see you next time.